last thing we did was draw a cube in two-point perspective. The next thing I want to show you is how your cube can change when you move it around in space because it's going to look different on your page. So first I'm going to show you with these actual cubes. Um, <clears throat> remember that with two-point perspective, we've switched from having a flat plane facing towards us and a flat plane in the back facing away from us. And we've rotated our cube or twisted our cube. So now all six sides, the top, the bottom, the front and the back, and the front and the back sides, all are moving back in depth. That's what makes it two-point perspective. And your cube can also move from side to side. It can move forwards and backwards. And then it can move up and down. And really, I want to show you a lot about what happens when your cube moves up and down, because that can be really confusing for people. So <clears throat> if I were to move my cube down on the table, this point of view is called a bird's eye view. And you want to think of it like your eye is above the, cu the cube looking down on it. So think of it like you're a bird up in the sky flying around looking down on something. And I can see the top and the front of the cube in particular. You might be able to see that better. I know the lighting in here might be weird so that you can't see that on a white cube. It might be easier to see on the clear cube. I'm not sure which one is going to look better for you guys from the camera's point of view. Um, however, I'm looking down on either one of these objects. If I were to move it up so that it's right at the same height as my camera lens, or it's also at the same height as my eye, coincidentally, um, then you're not going to be able to see any of the bottom of the cube or the top of the cube. You're just going to be looking at the sides. And then if I move it up above, then, oh wait, this one, don't forget, this one's called eye level because your eyes are at the same level. Um, and then if you move it up above, this one is called a worm's eye view. And that's because you want to think of it like your eye is below the object. So you're like the worm lying on the ground looking up at something. We don't usually draw this point of view very often because um, we have gravity. Things stick to the table. We want to draw them when they're resting on the table. So that's how it looks on the actual cube. Let me show you how that's going to change and look different on your page when you're moving your cube up and down the page. OK, so what you have here is the two-point perspective that we drew last. This is the cube that we did with two vanishing points. And I wanted to talk about how this changes in terms of the height of your eye. So right now we have our horizon line up above, which means our eye is up above. Or you could think of it like your camera is up above, right? Looking down on the object. So you can see the top. If you wanted to draw this instead of from a bird's eye view, from a worm's eye view, you can actually just rotate it, switch it to the other point of view. And now your eye is below looking up at the bottom, and your camera is below looking up at the bottom of the cube. So <coughs> this is the bird's eye view. Let's look at it in another illustration here. So here I've got my horizon line right in the middle. That's the same um, designation as the height of my eye or the height of my camera. And this is the bird's eye view that we were looking at just last. But this is a solid cube. So here, you're looking down on the top of the cube. You can't see the back of the cube, but you can see the front um, left and right corners. <coughs> if I had my eye at the same height as my cube, either at eye level bisecting the horizon or eye level with my cube resting on the horizon, sometimes you'll see buildings in this point of view. I usually like to move the buildings so they're a little bit below because I think it's a little bit easier to see. The reason that eye level right on the horizon line is difficult is that you only have angles on the sides <coughs> um, where the top is. And at the bottom, you can see this is a horizontal line and this is a horizontal line because it's at the same height as my eye or the camera or the horizon line. I think it's a little bit easier to see it here where you have an angle up at the bottom and a slight angle up at the top so that you can see that these lines are actually going back in space, both the top and the bottom. I think that's a little bit clearer. But either one is going to be called eye level. 
And then this last view, this one is the least common one. I don't usually draw the worm's eye view that often, and that's thanks to gravity. We have gravity sticking things to the ground and to the table, and so the most common point of view that we're gonna see is either eye level <laughs> or bird's eye view. Worm's eye view is a little bit less common. And that's where your eye is down low, the horizon line is down low, below the object. The object is up above, and you can see a little bit of the bottom of the object, as well as the sides. <coughs> Later, we're gonna talk about how this changes this top angle. Notice that your worm's eye view is sort of like an arrow at the top. This is an arrow at the top of the eye level. This is an arrow at the top of this eye level. And then suddenly, when you drop below the horizon line, this looks like the letter Y. And we're gonna talk about that in another video again. Let's look at how this really impacts where your eye is. You can see that in the worm's eye view, I'm, it's as if my little stick figure guy is lying on the ground. <coughs> He's looking up and seeing a large amount of sky, but he can barely see very far on the ground. If you were standing and your height of your eye or the height of the camera, remember your camera could be down here too, if you lower your camera down on the ground. Um, if you're standing and your height of your eye is in the middle of the page, you're gonna see about an equal amount of ground and an equal amount of sky. And then if you're raised up, either elevated like this little guy is on a ladder or standing on a hill or standing on a rooftop and looking down, um, or maybe you're a figure off in the distance and your height of your eye is about that level, you're gonna see less sky and more um, of the ground. And this is gonna be your um, bird's eye view. So you've got bird's eye view, eye level, and worm's eye view shown in different ways. So when you move your cube around, remember you can move it side to side, front to back, and then up and down. The up and down is gonna change your point of view. You're gonna make it either bird's eye view, eye level, or worm's eye view, and that's really gonna impact how you see your object and how you see the drawing and how you do the drawing. So hopefully that will help you in some of those more confusing aspects of perspective and um, and then we're gonna get going on some other stuff too. I'm gonna show you some next steps in another video. Thank you all so much for watching. More videos are coming soon, so if you wish to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and do that. And also you can check out my website, lzmstudio.com.